this video is about the dynamic properties from an oscillator. I've made a simple oscillator and you can find this oscillator on my YouTube channel. But in this video I want to, spe to pay uh, special attention to the dynamic properties. And one of the dynamic properties is at first a working point. And I've point, pointed out that very mo uh, much more in earlier videos. The potentiometer to the base here sets the working point. So that's one of the dynamic properties. There are a lot more, but okay. I want to show now what the changing of the potentiometer means in terms of uh, dynamic properties. I'm going to change it here and we're going to watch the, the oscilloscope here. Now I change the potentiometer, the working point. And you can see that the frequency changes and now it stops. I don't have a uh, frequency counter connected to it, but here you can see, I want to change the time base a little bit, that uh, frequency changes a lot. This is more or less a square wave, and the aim from this oscillator was a sine wave. But it generates a square wave because the amplification is too much, and I cannot change it by means of changing the base potentiometer. So when you see this, you have, and you want a sine wave, you have to change the collector or emitter resistor. Now it stops completely. So there's a quite a critical point on the potentiometer where the oscillator works. Um, the second issue is this, the inductance from the coil. This is the coil that I've used here and by means of moving in and out the ferrite rod that's here, this one, I can change the frequency and also the waveform. So I want to demonstrate it now and directly I will show that this gives problems. Now I take the ferrite rod out and the whole thing doesn't want to oscillate. So this also uh, belongs to the dynamical properties of an oscillator. Sometimes it doesn't want to start. Put, put in the ferrite rod again and still it doesn't want to start. Now I'm going to change the working point by varying the potentiometer at the base and you can see that it suddenly starts. So all these factors work together to make an oscillator work. Now I take out the ferrite rod again. You can see that the frequency goes up. That's logical. The inductance uh, gets uh, lower and that means that the frequency goes up. And you can also see that the waveform changes and that's also important. So when I put in the ferrite rod again, it doesn't start. Also one of the dynamic properties from an oscillator, when it has switched off, it doesn't want to start easily. You have to change the working point again and then it starts. Now it starts again. And by changing the working point, you can also see that I can change the waveform. So I take out the ferrite rod again, and the waveform changes. You can see it, and here it's more or less a sine wave or something like that. No, it is not a sine wave. Okay. 
but here perhaps it gets a scene away if I take the ferrite rod more out. But and now I change the working point again. I have something that looks like a scene wave, but change the working point again. And now not very successful, but uh, it points out what I wanted to uh, say, that uh, an oscillator is always a dynamic circuit. So the waveform can depend on how the coil is made, uh, whether or not there is an inductance in the coil, into the coil, by means of a ferrite rod. The um, a working point here from the uh, voltage to the base by means of the um, uh, potentiometer at the base and also here there's a capacitor between the base and the uh, emitter and here also between the emitter and the ground and both capacitors the value from these capacitors also have uh, a very important impact on how the waveform looks like. And also this resistor here in the collector lead and the emitter uh, resistor have also uh, an effect on how the waveform looks like. So when you want a pure Sina wave you have to experiment with all these values and uh, in an earlier video on my channel I've uh, showed um, which um, values are uh, important. So in terms uh, the relation between the collector and the emitter resistance etc etc. So when you want to have a pure waveform on a certain moment you have to uh, do some experiments and uh, find out uh, the right components to get a pure Sina wave. 